Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Bequa again, bringing you another video on how to navigate your job search. And today I want to go over a really touchy subject and a question that I've been getting a lot lately. And it's how do I talk about compensation with a recruiter? Stick around and I'll show you how. All right, welcome back guys. So how do I talk about compensation? This talk is never easy to say the least. And in my own experience as a recruiter, um, I'd say have these conversations up front rather than later. Why? Because if you have a conversation about compensation later down the line, you could be very disappointed as a candidate. Let's just say you have expectations of going in and making 100K this year and you get your offer and it's 80K and that's the max that they can do. You're going to be pretty upset, right? I would be. But um, that's why I advise all my candidates and I try to ask them, you know, what are your compensation expectations early on? And I would say there's three things you have to keep in mind when you're a candidate and it would be one, be very transparent with your recruiter. Two, do your research. And three, have realistic expectations, right? What are you looking for when you join the company? Um, are you looking for career growth? Is it only compensation that you're looking for? Are you trying to maximize on that, right? And for number one, being transparent. I mean, my recruiting process has always been super transparent. I love to paint the picture for my candidates from point A to Z. Um, I'd love to disclose as much detail as possible without violating any policies or any NDAs on our end. Uh, but just really want to give a great candidate experience knowing exactly what they're getting themselves into, exactly what we can do for them. And since recruiters know all the comp band ranges, it's in our best interest to kind of let you know what we can or cannot do. So that's why I said, you know, be very transparent on what you're looking for as a candidate um, when you're shopping around in different companies. And uh, what I've realized as well is most people that are interviewing for jobs think it's just like a number that they're aiming for. Let's just say 100K. I want 100K, um, can you get that for me or not? But they don't realize that comp is sometimes broken down into three to four parts. And let me elaborate. One, being the base salary, for example, 100K. Um, and two, equity, which is usually in the form of RSUs or stocks that are granted to you, vested over four years, um, or even options right to own more of equity in the company and three there's also a annual bonus that can be paid out based off performance um, on average around 20 percent based on the company and you also can get a sign-on bonus if um, you are worth that sign-on bonus or they think uh, that you have you know multiple options and they're trying to win you over they can offer you that sign-on bonus and really incentivize you to join that company so three to four things to keep in mind when you're negotiating for your compensation, okay? So although a company might not be able to hit that 100K in just base salary, they may be able to hit that with the equity, with the bonus, uh, with refreshers as well, which is basically, um, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get into that a little later, but basically another stock grant, assuming that you stay with the company for over a year. So there's many things a company can do to incentivize you to come join them and compensation is just one piece uh, make sure you talk about compensation uh, up front and I think this saves us a lot of headache otherwise you go through the recruiting process and you realize that there's a lot of time wasted if you know that company can't meet your expectations and hopefully those expectations are realistic right um, I had a candidate the other day that didn't even care about compensation up front so we didn't have that conversation at all they didn't feel comfortable sharing and that's totally fine but when we got to the compensation piece uh, they were surprised that we came lower than their expectations and um, realizing that you know we couldn't meet their expectations they were pretty upset uh, but we did talk it through and eventually that candidate did accept an, a potential offer uh, but that's not to say that happens all the time or anything like that. But if we have that conversation up front, it really just makes the whole recruiting process easier since we're on the same page. It's a lot smoother and we can move forward towards that 
goal, right? That we both have of you working for that company as well as um, you feeling good about working for that company, right? I always try my best to really extend offers uh, based on what the candidate wants and their expectations. And it's great to be upfront so that recruiters can communicate with the hiring manager or even the comp team uh, that your expectations as a candidate are being met from the beginning. Really take these into consideration. But aside from compensation, I want you guys to know that, you know, sometimes you do have to take a step back in order to go two steps forward. And what I mean by that is taking that small pay cut to really work for the company that you truly want to work for, perhaps. Uh, for me, I was reluctant to even join Uber from my previous company, which was Demand Force. And, you know, they were paying me less at Uber, yet I wanted to gain the experience that Uber had. Um, I wanted to learn from the tech giants and be a part of that startup culture. So I was reluctant to join. I took a slight pay cut. And, you know, in those two to three months, I've learned so much and I provided so much value that um, some of my friends that worked in the company actually realized that I was providing a lot of value. And um, long story short, I applied for a recruiting position and I got the job. So my income jumped almost double immediately within working three months at a company uh, that I thought you know, was worth a shot. So um, my lesson here is sometimes you do have to take a step back from not just compensation, but realizing how do you strategically move in the market? How do you position yourself for success? And will you be successful? Everything is a risk. And I took a lot of risk to be where I'm at now at Google, but it wasn't without blood, sweat and tears. So I'm going to say, I'm going to end this by saying that it's up to you to decide your strategy on where you want to go and what you want to do. But ultimately, make sure it feels right. Make sure it's for the right reasons and uh, make sure your heart's in it. OK. All right. Peace out, fam. If you guys haven't already, please smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and drop a comment on what you guys want to see for the next video. I'm always um, open to creating new content. I know I haven't been lately, but uh, message me on LinkedIn, connect with me. Um, the link will be in the description below. I always message anyone that DMs me on LinkedIn with any tips that they need. So feel free to reach out. Don't be shy and I'll see you guys next time. All right. Get your base salary. Sometimes you can be compensated a little bit more fairly on the equity piece. So make sure you're communicating. Babe, I'm recording a video. What do you want? Okay, well, Ray is going to drop off the cupcakes to you. So either I'll pick it up from you, or if you want to drop it off to you, I'll know that's cool too. But